Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I have not done in quite a while and that is going to be my March wrap-up. I don't think I've filmed a wrap-up video since October just because I had been getting a little bit burnt out on doing them. I just wasn't really super motivated to film wrap-ups at that point in time so I took a little bit of a break. And then my initial plan for 2024 was to just do them quarterly instead but then I sat down with like all of the books that I had read so far this year. My memory was not serving me in that time and I was trying to talk about the books that I had read in January and I was like, I don't remember anything about these. So I scrapped that and we may be back to monthly wrap-ups. I'm not sure. I would love to know what you guys think. Do you enjoy monthly wrap-ups? Like what's the deal with that? So yes, that is what we are doing today. <laughs> I ended up reading 10 books in March, which I am quite excited about just because I feel like I had a rather slow start to my reading year for me personally. I was in a bit of a reading slump in February. It just wasn't a good time. But I feel like I definitely got out of my reading slump in March and I ended up reading 10 books. A couple of these I haven't talked about on my channel yet, so I'm really excited to go through those. So let's just get into them. I know for a while there I was kind of ordering the books based on my enjoyment of them, but honestly I just forgot to do that before I started filming this. So I'm just gonna kind of randomly grab them from this pile and I'm just gonna do it that way. So the first book that I want to talk about is The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This is book one of the second era Mistborn trilogy. This is like the Wax and Wayne. They're gonna be four books. I don't know how many books are supposed to be in this series, but I know there's four out now. I actually ended up enjoying this book quite a bit more than I thought I was going to. I was very dubious going into Era 2 just because I'd heard it was very like Wild West vibes and I was like, I don't know how I feel about that, but honestly, I don't really think this book specifically gives Wild West vibes. So maybe that's just my own fault for assuming that's what this book was going to be like, but honestly, I feel like this series kind of reads a little bit more like historical fantasy almost, but they have guns. But this book is following our main character, Waxilium, who before the events of this book was kind of out in the, you know, outskirts of society. He was kind of a law enforcement figure almost, not officially, but kind of just, that's what he did. He took down the bad guys. Until he gets a call one day that his uncle has died, so he has to return to Luthadel. I believe that's where this is set. And take over the family business, kind of also help to repair the family name because his uncle was into some questionable stuff. But when he returns to the city, he finds out there's been an outbreak of crime recently. So for a while, he's kind of debating between whether or not he should get involved in this because he did kind of give up his life of crime stopping basically. But eventually one of his old friends from his time in the roughs, Wayne, comes back and he kind of convinces Wax to get involved in everything. So they work together with one of our other main characters, Marisy, to kind of figure out who's behind all this crime, why they're doing it, what's going on, all of that kind of stuff. So I ended up really enjoying this. It's obviously not a favorite Brandon Sanderson book, but I had a better time with this than I thought I was going to. I think Wax and Wayne are a really solid duo to follow because they are definitely starkly different from each other. Wax is a very serious, no-nonsense kind of guy, but Wayne is one of the most ridiculous people you will probably ever meet. He's always cracking jokes, he's always just saying inappropriate things at very inappropriate times, and I think Wayne has the potential to get on my nerves as the series <laughs> progresses, but for now I found him to be very entertaining and I think he's a very solid foil for Wax. And then I also really liked Marisy as one of our main characters. She is the cousin of a girl that Wax is in an arranged marriage with, but they kind of end up growing closer than the two of them ever would. And she's just a very intelligent and strong character and I enjoy what she adds into kind of the overall dynamic of these characters as well. And I also just love the Mistborn magic system. This is set like quite a while I think after the events of Era 1 but the magic system that is in Era 1 is still very much in effect in this series and I love the Mistborn magic system so much. I won't go into it again because I feel like I explain it all the time and you guys probably know at this point but it's just so good and overall I really liked it. It's not a favorite but I am definitely going to be continuing this series. I think I have these three books and then I also need to read Yumi and some short stories and then I will be completely cut up with the Cosmere which is crazy honestly but I'm so excited so we'll be continuing this series in April 
or may, hopefully, soon. I'll read it soon. Then I did decide to pick up a little bit of a romance book this month, and that is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I ended up loving this book so much, honestly. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it quite as much as I did again, but it was just a really solid read. Basically, this is following our main character, Florence, and she is a ghostwriter for a very popular author, and in the very beginning of this book, we're kind of seeing that she is struggling with writing the latest book that she is supposed to be writing, so she goes into her editor, who is new. She's never met him before, but she goes into his office and she's like, hold on, he's kind of fine. So she goes in there and she asks for an extension for the deadline for this project. And he's like, absolutely not. Why would you even think about asking me about that? So her day's bad to say the least. But then later she gets a call from her family that her dad has actually passed away from a heart attack. So she has to go back to her very small kind of kooky town to kind of deal with all of the funeral arrangements because her family actually owns a funeral home in this town so she is going to a funeral but she's also like planning for the funeral so we're basically just following her as she is trying to carry out all of the odd requests that her father put in his will for his funeral so that's bad enough but then we figure out that florence can actually see and talk to ghosts so when she goes home she's already going through it but then she walks out of the funeral home one day and bam there's her new hot editor as a ghost, wondering what the hell he's doing there. So this book is a really interesting mix between Florence trying to work through the grief of her father passing because they were very close, and then also like a supernatural ghost rom-com kind of situation. And if I had really known that going into the book, I would have probably been a bit curious as to how that was gonna work out, but I actually think it works really well because you have Florence going through these moments of profound sadness when she's just casually going through her day realizing like, oh, my dad is dead and you have the low points. But then you also have these really cute moments between Florence and her editor, Ben. So I thought those added a lot of levity that this story needed. And I just thought it was a really good balance. I also loved the spooky ambiance of this book because this book deals with death in many different ways, obviously. So kind of seeing what that inherently added into the story, I loved. There was a whole part where Florence went into a cemetery with Ben and I was like, the midnight cemetery walks. Thank you. I do have a couple of gripes with this book though. Overall, I really enjoyed it, but I think there were a couple of things that held me back from really being obsessed with it. And mainly that is the humor that is used in this book. There were a lot of jokes that I just didn't really think landed for me and way too many puns. There were so many puns about death. I was like, one or two, I'd be okay with one or two, but there were way too many of them for my liking. And then I do also think that the romance ended up feeling kind of insta-lovey almost, because I like how the book ended, but I don't think our characters had realistically known each other long enough to justify how they were feeling about each other, okay? I really liked their chemistry, I thought it was well done, but overall, they had known each other for like a week, and he was a ghost for most of it, so I was like, I just... I don't know, I feel like maybe if it had taken place over a longer span of time, I would have been a bit more into it. But when we got to the end of the book and they were like, oh my God, I love you. I was like, when did, when did we get here? How did this happen? <laughs> it also is a romance book. So maybe I just need to suspend my disbelief for a little bit on that account. But aside from those two things, I love this book. And if you are looking for kind of a spooky book for spring, I would highly recommend this one because it is dealing with ghosts and death and it is dark in that way. But I still think this is more of a spring read than an autumnal read. So if you want like a spooky book for April, I'd recommend. Then next up, I did pick up a more traditionally spring-like read, in my opinion, and that is The Magician's Daughter by H.G. Perry. I've been trying to read this book ever since I bought it last year in July, I think. I've put it on quite a few TBRs, I've just never gotten to it, but it was finally time that I picked this book up and I really ended up enjoying it. I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as I was hoping to, but I still think this is a really solid read and if you like historical fantasy, I would recommend. Basically, this book is following our main character, Biddy, who lives on this magical island off the coast of Scotland with her guardian, Rowan, who is a magician, and he also has a familiar who is Hutch, who takes the form of like a little rabbit, which is so cute. And Rowan keeps disappearing off the island in the middle of the night and Biddy kind of wants to know 
Like, dude, where are you going? He won't tell her. She's literally never left this island and he won't give her any information about the outside world. So Biddy has led a very isolated existence so far. Until, due to some magical circumstances, Biddy has to leave the island and kind of experience what life is like in the real world, essentially. And this book is very much a coming of age story for Biddy because at the beginning, she's very naive about the world. She's very innocent. She has never seen what real life is like, really. Until she is very abruptly kind of thrust into this school for destitute girls. She ends up being a teacher there and she's starting to see the harsh realities of what the world was like for so many people. So I really liked how that was done and I think it was a really important reality check for Biddy to have and it was very crucial to her character development. But my favorite part about this story was the characters. I really enjoyed Biddy as a main character. I feel like she is a very optimistic person to follow and I feel like if you're in a situation like she's going through you definitely have to maintain that hope throughout it all. I also really enjoyed Rowan who is her guardian. As I said he is a magician and he's very very howl coded in my opinion. He's kind of moody but he's also very charismatic and charming and I just couldn't stop picturing Howl the whole time which I'm not mad about. But I also really liked the fact that he was a very flawed guardian. There were definitely a lot of things that he was holding back from Biddy and wouldn't tell her and kind of seeing her grapple with whether or not she should trust him, even though she's known him her entire life, I thought was really fascinating. And it definitely shows how multifaceted he is as a person. My only real issue with this book is the fact that the pacing in the second half is really odd. I feel like there's so many things that took so many pages to finally happen when it could have been condensed and I probably probably would have stayed a little bit more engaged in it overall. And also I do kind of wish this book was a bit more whimsical. I feel like the first chapter, it was promising me a lot of whimsy, a lot of magic. And I understand why it doesn't maintain that vibe throughout the entire story because it's kind of indicative of what Biddy is going through, losing her innocence or whatever as she goes out into the world. But I wish there was more whimsy. We all know how I feel about the whimsy. But it's fine <laughs> because overall I am just really excited that I finally got around to reading this book and overall I really did enjoy my time reading it. So the next book that I want to talk about is The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This is a book that I have been aware of for quite a while because I knew that Holly Black had other books that took place in the same world as the Folk of the Air in the continuation series. I had just never really been super interested in picking them up but I read The Prisoner's Throne this month which we'll talk about in a little bit here and I didn't love it. It was fine, but I was just a little bit disappointed. So I was kind of left wanting more. So I was like, why not try out one of Holly Black's other fairy books? And this one is a standalone, so I thought it seemed perfect. So I picked up the ebook of it one night. I read like half of it in one go, and then I finished it up the next morning because I really, really liked this book, honestly. This was really close to being a five star. It didn't make it quite to that level, but it's still a book that I would really recommend if you liked The Cruel Prince because I just adore Holly Black's depiction of Faye. I just feel like they're so evil and tricksy and it's just so much more fun that way. I also feel like the way the Fae are depicted brings in a horror element almost, not in like a super scary way, but in like a dark fairy tale kind of way. And I also loved that because it felt a little bit spooky at times, but it still maintained that like whimsical nature that the folk have. But basically this book takes place in a small town that is kind of surrounded by fae territory. And in this town, for as long as anybody can remember, there has been this glass casket in the woods that has a fairy prince in it. He has been in an extended sleep I guess, in that casket for quite a while. All the teens are always going to the glass casket to party for some reason. But in this book specifically, we are following our two main characters, Hazel and Ben, and they have also been quite infatuated with the fairy prince in this coffin. And one day they wake up to find out that last night the casket was broken and the fairy prince is nowhere to be seen. So they kind of take it upon themselves to find him, figure out why he was put in this extended sleep, who did it to him, and kind of just help him out with all of that. I just really ended up enjoying these characters. I feel like Hazel is kind of a blueprint for Jude almost because she wants to be a fairy knight so badly and I feel like her and Jude kind of have the same drive to be a part of the fairy court in some way. I really enjoyed Ben as our other main character as well and kind of seeing how he interacted with the fey prince. I really like that as well. There are a couple of romances that are set up in this book that I just thought were super cute. I think the main thing I really liked about this book was just the general ambiance of it. I feel like the way that the story was told felt very 
nostalgic almost like I don't even know how to explain it but it was just like a feeling that I got while I was reading it and I was like I really like this. I also just really liked a lot of the plot reveals that we got in this book. There were a couple of things that definitely shocked me to my core. I was like no way but it was so interesting and I loved the ramifications of what that meant for our main characters. So overall, I just really enjoyed this book. I'm really glad that I finally got around to reading it. And I do think I'm going to read the Modern Fairy Tale series. I know that one was written quite a bit before this one and I know it's not gonna be the best, but I want to just read all of the series that are set in this kind of like general fairy world. So I'm probably gonna pick those up soon. I have started Tithe actually. It's the first book in that series. It's something. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> so the next book that I have here, I'm not gonna spend too much time on just because I talked about this in a vlog and then me and Cass did an entire live show for it. But that is A Reaper at the Gates by Asapa Tahir. This is the third book in the An Ember in the Ashes Quartet. And I really liked this one, but honestly, I think it's probably my least favorite of this series so far. Generally, I really liked the way that it progressed the plot. And I thought there were a lot of cool reveals throughout this book. But honestly, I think I'm kind of losing interest in some of the characters specific arcs. And what I really want is for all of our point of views to come together. I think they were the most separate in this book. I don't think there was a ton of overlap at all. And my favorite thing about multi POV series is when the points of view come together and work together and I feel like that's when you know the good character dynamics develop and I also feel like I just generally enjoy the characters more when we get to see them interacting with each other but in this one I just felt like they were very separate which I I just didn't love. Overall I'm still liking the series I just think compared to the first two this is my least favorite one so far and I'm also quite interested to see how the series is going to wrap up. I'm a bit nervous going into A Sky Beyond the Storm honestly just because there are so many things that have been present in this book and like the previous books as well that need to get wrapped up in this last book and I'm kind of thinking it might be too many things that need to be wrapped up in one book so I am excited but also a little bit nervous. I just really hope the last book is amazing. Then the next book that I have here is Feybound by Sarah L. Arifi. This was my Patreon buddy read for the month. This is the first book in a new fantasy trilogy, I believe, and it is following two elven sisters who get exiled from their land, and they kind of end up stumbling upon the Fey court, maybe? And normally that probably wouldn't be such a big deal, but the Fey have not been seen for over a millennium. And I generally liked it, but I do have some things that I didn't love about it. As for things I liked, I thought the lore that was in this world was really cool and we kept getting chapters at the beginning of each part that would kind of expand upon it and I liked the way that that was done. I also thought the world building was done really seamlessly. I never felt like this book was info dumping. I thought you learned everything really organically and I really enjoyed that as well. And also the ending of this book definitely has quite a few plot twists. I feel like it was just like twist after twist after twist and I was hooked. The way that the reveals just kept coming definitely kept me super Super engaged and it does make me want to pick up the next book in the series. I'll probably listen to it on audio when it comes out. Not sure when that's gonna be but I will probably pick it up. But I do have some issues with the book as well. First of all I think the magic system in theory is really cool because the Fae and the elves kind of have their own different magic systems and the elves have like drum fire where they literally beat on drums and that somehow does magical things and then the Fae I don't even remember what their magic system was to be honest because I don't think either of these magic systems were explained very well. I feel very in the dark about what exactly they do and how they work and normally I would assume that that would get expanded upon in later books but I feel like our characters have a working knowledge of them now so I feel like we as readers should also have a working knowledge of them now, but I just don't think it was ever really well explained. And then my other main issue is the relationships present in this book because this is a romantic fantasy. Obviously it doesn't like 100% focus on the relationships, but they are there and there is some time dedicated to kind of developing them. But I don't think there was enough time devoted to developing them. I don't know, our characters, they started feeling some type of way about each other. There's kind of like two different relationships that are present in this book. And I didn't feel the chemistry between either of them, any of them. It just wasn't there for me. I think conceptually, I was really excited about both of these because one of them is like sapphic, enemies to lovers. And then the other one is kind of like annoyance to love almost. But by the time they were like getting into it, I was like, I, I don't know how we got here. I feel like they weren't built up enough for me to really be that invested in either of them, even though I was initially so excited about them. 
So I think there are a lot of points in this book's favor, but I also think there are just some things that didn't quite land for me. But overall, I would say I had a good time reading this book and as I said, I will probably continue it. Then I also did read three new releases for the month. I do have an entire reading vlog of me reading these three books, so I'm going to go through these rather quickly. But the first one that I have here is Bride by Ali Hazelwood. This book was so fun until it wasn't. I have some issues with this book too. <laughs> Overall, I really liked our main character, Misery. I thought she was a really solid Ali Hazelwood main character for the most part. A lot of her female main characters irritate me. They're a little too quirky for my liking, but sometimes I can kind of just ignore that. But I think Misery was the right amount of snarky, she was the right amount of sarcastic, and I just really enjoyed her as a main character. And she's not like really tiny and small. So I like to see Allie Hazelwood switching it up a bit, okay? And then I also really like the romance for like 90% of it. And then the love interest did some stupid shit. I just... <laughs> I feel like this book let me down so hard towards the end of it because for the first like, I don't know, 300 pages, I was so into it. I was like, yes, give me the vampire werewolf romance. I was eating it up. But then when I got to the last 100 pages, it was just like so downhill and I was so sad. But basically to give you guys a quick synopsis of this book, you are following this vampire whose name is Misery. She has to be in this arranged marriage with the kind of alpha of a werewolf pack. I think they're pack. And romance ensues from there. There's definitely a lot of kind of political dealings going on in this world as well. And I feel like that could have been interesting had it not been done through a series of info dumps. I feel like the information wasn't delivered to me in an organic way. So there were just certain chapters that were just full of information. And I was like, I don't want to read this. There were like full chapters, just full of dialogue of our characters, like essentially just giving you the reader things that you need to know for this book to make sense. And I did not like the way that that was done because they were really boring. I also never want to read an Omegaverse book again. Like I know this isn't like fully into it. I know there's more that it could go into. And I knew that going into this. So that's not really a valid complaint. It's kind of just like a thing that I didn't like. Oh, it was so fun. It was so fun for a while and then it wasn't. <laughs> then I also read The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. This is the book that follows the stolen heir in kind of the continuation series of The Folk of the Air. I was very let down by this book as well, to be honest. I... I'm so sad. I feel like I was one of the few people that really, really enjoyed The Stolen Air. I feel like I kept seeing so many people really disliking The Stolen Air. So when I picked it up, I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed it. And I think the reason I liked that one so much was because it was so different from the Cruel Prince series, because the Cruel Prince series is very, like, politically driven. There is some romance to it, but for the most part, you're... it's very political, okay? And The Stolen Air felt very action-adventure. We were kind of going on a quest. We were getting to see new places in the fairy realm, and it was just so much fun. Like, it was just a really fun kind of traveling book, and I love traveling books. But I feel like this book kind of went back to, like, the political nature that the Cruel Prince series had, and I just, like, in this book specifically, I didn't care in the slightest. And then, like, the romance didn't really redeem it as well, because in the Cruel Prince series, I know I keep comparing them, I'm sorry. Um, in the Cruel Prince series, it's like very political, but I kind of liked it more in that series. And then also, Jude and Cardin, love them so much. I was I just like pick up crumbs every time I read that series and it's so fun. But like, I didn't enjoy the politics in this one specifically. And I also didn't really care about Oak and Surin as a couple. They just don't have the same draw for me that Jude and Cardin do. And I'm not trying to, well, I guess I am trying to compare them as I, as I say this. But even disregarding that comparison, I just don't think this book was super engaging. So I didn't love it. However, one thing I do want to say is that there was so much Jude and Cardin content in this book. It was so stunning. And it really just shows that no matter what series I'm in, apparently, I will pick up crumbs of Jude and Cardin. This is who I am. I can't change that. And then we do have my, I think this is my only five star read of the month. We have A Grave Robbery by Deanna Rayborn. I can't even, oh, I can't even get into it right now. I say this every time, but we all know how I feel about the Veronica Speedwell series around here. It is absolutely stunning. <laughs> This series follows our main character, Veronica, who lives in Victorian London, and she goes around with her companion, Stoker, and they solve mysteries. It's just a really fun mystery series. This is the ninth book in the series, and I can't believe I have to wait two years until the tenth one comes out. 
Do you see the pain in my eyes? I can't, I'm just so sad. But this one specifically, I really, really enjoy. This is one of my favorites in the series, I think, mainly because it really leans into more kind of horror elements than the other ones do. Because in this book specifically, a stoker who is a taxidermist gets kind of presented with this wax figure of a woman. And that is given to Stoker by his employer and he wants Stoker to kind of fit the wax figure with a mechanism that will make it look like the wax figure is breathing, like the um, the Sleeping Beauty wax figure in Madame Tussauds. So Stoker's like, all right, yeah, sure, that doesn't seem too hard. He cuts into the wax figure and he finds out it's an actual woman, which very gruesome, very spooky. I feel like this book overall has a very like Frankenstein kind of tone to it. And I will leave you with that. I just loved how creepy this book got at times. We all know how I feel about my spooky books. I feel like this one is the spookiest out of all of them. So it definitely got a solid five star for me. I think it's probably my third favorite in the series. My top one is the fourth one, then the seventh one than this one. So I'm very excited that I found a new favorite in the series. And then the last book that I have to talk about with you guys today is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I just realized I read both of like Ashley Poston's really popular adult romances this month. So that's fun. And this book has very similar themes to The Dead Romantics because it very much centers the grief that our main character Clementine is going through because she recently lost an aunt that she was very close to. But again, it's like a very interesting mix of the exploration of Clementine's grief as well as this like rom-com situation that's happening. But again, I just think that mix is actually really well done and I think it adds in those moments of happiness and hopefulness into the kind of depressing times that Clementine is going through. So I feel very much the same way towards the themes in this book as I felt towards the themes in The Dead Romantics. Also something I really, really love about Ashley Poston's books is the fact that she adds in a small kind of magical element to these romances. Obviously in The Dead Romantics, it was the fact that our main character could talk to ghosts and that ghosts were real. And in this one, it has a magical apartment, basically. It's like a time traveling element. It's really fun because Clementine inherits her aunt's old apartment and her aunt always told her this is like a, it's a magical apartment, but obviously Clementine never believed her until one day she walked into her apartment and it was magically seven years in the past. And this dude was just standing in the kitchen and she's like, what are you doing in my apartment? but he's also like, what are you doing in my apartment? <laughs> and their romance kind of blossoms from there. Again, I just thought this romance was so cute and I loved Clementine and Iwan. But again, I have like the same issue with the romance as I had in The Dead Romantics. And that's the fact that this one also felt very insta-lovey. I feel like, especially in this one, the way that they were kind of like acting towards each other at the end of the book did not match up with how long they had realistically known each other because they obviously spent a lot of time together in this apartment, probably like a couple weeks maybe, you know? But the way they were acting towards each other at the end of the book, she was just like, I know you, you're not like this. And I was like, how do you know? How You've known the man for less than a month. How can you even say things like that? Like, again, I probably just needed to suspend my disbelief because this is a romance book with time travel in it. But I just kind of, I didn't buy it at all. But that is like my only gripe with this book. And overall, I'm just really happy that I decided to pick up this one and The Dead Romantics. I think out of the two, The Dead Romantics is my favorite, but this one was also just such a wholesome read. It was so lovely. And I will definitely be picking up Ashley Poston's new release that's coming out in June. It's called A Novel Love Story. It sounds so good. And I will be there. I will be picking it up. I cannot wait. But um, yeah, here we go. That is it. Those are all the books that I read in March. But I really hope you guys enjoyed just sitting down with me to talk about some books that I've read recently. I feel like for the most part, I liked all of them. Maybe there were a few duds, but for the most part, I had a really good time with all of the books that I picked up this month. So I hope you guys did as well. Obviously, I would love to know down below what are some of your favorite books that you guys picked up in March? Or if you're feeling shady, I would love to know what some of your least favorite books you picked up in March were. I always find those to be quite interesting. <laughs> also, before we go, I did want to thank everybody over on my Patreon. If you are ever looking for more content from me, that is always linked down below. We do a monthly buddy read. This month we are reading Ink Blood Sister Scribe, which I am quite excited to get into. I think I'm gonna start that in a few days, so I can't wait. But with that, I am now going to let you go. So again, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.